Hi everybody, this is David Lee. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to have a detailed explanation of my new Ford GT. We have Steve here from Ford Performance to come and explain this to us. So thank you for coming, Steve. Hey, thank you, thank you. I love talking about the Ford GT. And uh, yeah, spending about an hour with me will save a lot, a lot of time trying to read the owner's manual and scratch <laughs> your head and trying to work it out. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm not a reading guy, so yeah. this is best. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so I'll, I'll be able to walk you through all of the high points on the car and then get into some more detail later on. As I always do, I always pick a watch to kind of pair with the car. Being that this is a modern car, got the blue with the carbon, and our black, yeah, I've decided to pick the Rolex GMT Batman as his nickname. Uh, it's, it's a GMT World Time Zone. We've got the black and a blue uh, bezel, the, um, the black dial. But it's, as Rolex uh, technology is built very strong, I think the model for Ford is built tough. So I think it's also a very uh, good pairing. The Ford GT was certainly one that I loved and wanted. That's the easy part. I think a lot of people want it. A lot of collectors want it. Then the second part is how do we get it? Because it's not that easy to get. What I had thought was, well, you know, the Ford and Ferrari thing, of course the movie came out. I think in the spirit of fun, there is a little bit of a competition still. And so I thought, well, what if I made a case to them that says that obviously I am a well-noted Ferrari collector on social media. And if I was to be given an allocation to buy this car, you know, all Obviously, I would buy it, drive it, be excited about it, be in my collection. My uh, followers would see that. It would be a little bit of an irony, a little bit of a, a fun kind of situation that a Ferrari collector would be owning a Ford and loving it, enjoying it. Lo and behold, I was offered a allocation. And then in the process of that, they even offered me the Carbon Series, which is more limited than the regular uh, Ford GT. The actual carbon tub, the chassis of the car, is the same as what is the GT race car. Mm. It comes out with the same mold, the same everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, when this car is born, it is not born race car or road car. It, oh, it's the same thing mm -hmm. until they start gluing the roll cage into the, mm -hmm. into the main mm -hmm. chassis, mm -hmm. then it separates mm -hmm. race car to road car. Mm -hmm. okay? Got it. This does have a roll cage up inside here. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the race car gets extra door bars and things, but mm. the top is mm. um, is the same as the GT. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the the dashboard is one of the is a structural piece. This helps hold the A pillars of the car together. So, on, as far as the uh, the um, carbon uh, fiber package, uh, they they didn't build so many of those. Exactly, exactly. This this is a carbon series mm -hmm. spec car. Yes. Okay. So the carbon series. Uh, is more like, is, is more of a track orientated car. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, you get which gives you the package gives you the exposed carbon fiber stripes down the center. Yes. Uh, on on the outside, you get the uh, titanium exhaust, mm -hmm. carbon fiber wheels, mm -hmm. titanium lug nuts. Uh, the next bit is we'll open up the engine cover next. Okay. And to do that, there's two ways of doing it. The first one, you can press a button on the key, mm -hmm. or you push this button right here next to the light switch. Yes. And it just releases the end, the, the electronic latch. And then we can just lift it straight up mm -hmm. and up it goes. Mm. And that is all of your luggage space. <laughs> yeah. So, Very generous. Huh? <laughs> yeah. This is not a road trip car. Yes. You know, you, you end up shipping, you can <laughs> ship all your clothes. Close this, mm -hmm. right? It's not the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Notice where the latch is. It's here, right. not at the back. So yes. First thing you do is when you put it down, you just put it down nice and gently. Mm -hmm. Don't slam it. Mm -hmm. Then to close it, to, to make it latch, yeah. you've got to load up the pressure and then Click. Yeah. If you just try and hit it once, it'll never work. Sure. It's load it and then hit yeah, it. Yeah, I remember I had to call Steve over at Galpin for the, to ask him. I said, how, Steve, how do you close this thing? You know, you pull it down, but it doesn't latch. And he had to tell me that trick. Yeah, for sure. That's, yeah. I get a call once a week. Yeah. <laughs> how do I close it? So that's yeah. the deal is you uh -huh. got to load it uh -huh. and then uh, and right. it finally latches. Sure. So at the back of the car here, um, the rear wing. It's in its down position right now. Right. When the wing is in its up position, it gains a little bit of angle of attack, right? But the biggest thing it does is it changes shape. It's the only mm. supercar out there, out there right now that goes up and it changes shape. Mm. 
and it changes shape by it moves this panel right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is this is like the uh, the gurney strip on the back. Mm -hmm. It moves the gurney, which helps trip the air, mm -hmm. but it also changes the shape of the wing underneath. Right. Okay. Right. Because the wings change shape, it's now creating downforce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you Incredible. are if you if you are driving really quickly above 85 miles an hour and you press the brake really hard it will go vertical mm, mm, mm. to act as an oh, air okay. brake as well wow that's, am yeah. that's amazing um, you, for packaging we've got um, the clutch and transmission cooler right here mm -hmm. and then the engine oil cooler is at that side so the air comes down the side of the car into this vent through the cooler and then out the tail light. Mm. There is hot air that comes out of the tail light from the coolers. Yeah. Now that's the thing about this car. The aerodynamic is crazy. It's really, really nuts. Yeah. This the, the whole design philosophy was um, efficiency. Mm -hmm. It is the most aero efficient. You know, or, or to try and make it as aero efficient as possible. Sure. Um, so packaging things like transmission coolers in here and and things like that is is really cool. Mm -hmm. You do have the titanium acroprovic exhaust, which is beautiful exhaust. It really is. Yeah. And then I don't know if you noticed it, but you've actually got you've got a backup camera right there. Yes. Right. yes. So this is a a, a full um, a full requirement box ticking everything yeah. because we've got the backup mm -hmm. camera down there as well. So we'll kind of move like down okay. the side of the car. Uh, so the first thing you'll see is that on the brakes. You've got two brake calipers. You've got your normal brakes, and then you've also got the parking brake as well. Mm. Um, some of your other collections, it will look like you've got a massive caliper here yes. because we've bolted that caliper over here with mm. a real nice cover. Oh, I see. Just for our packaging reasons, mm. we just separated the calipers right. out for you with the beautiful gloss carbon wheels yeah, and the this titanium lug nuts. Nice. Really, really cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So visually, the only difference between a 2020 GT and a 17, 18 or a 19 car, so like the earlier productions, yeah. visually they're exactly the same, mm -hmm. except mm. the intercooler. Okay. This is something that nobody ever knows. Oh, okay, right? wow, so good stuff. The intercooler on this 2020 is 50% bigger mm -hmm. than a earlier car. On the earlier cars, there is a divider panel right here and it mm. splits intercooler to air intake mm, mm, mm. well well during just normal uh, d development testing we found that we wanted a bigger intercooler mm. so they did so the engineers went back and scratched the head and were like how do we fit the cooler in there sure and they basically just deleted uh -huh. a lot of stuff that we found that we just didn't need oh wow so the air the air still enters the engine mm -hmm, through that mm -hmm. right if you look straight down you can see like a black tube yes that is the air intake. Oh, okay. So the air intake goes through the air filter, which mm -hmm. is right here, mm -hmm. from the filter across to the turbo, right. from the turbo back to the cooler, up the cooler, yes. and then the charged air is inside here, wow. going into the engine. Wow. Wow. So this is really the uh, 2020 is a kind of new improved within the Ford GT uh, technology of, of, of that part. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just during our first three years of production, there's a few things that we wanted to kind of tune up and change a little bit. Okay. The, it, we hit, so the 2020s have a bigger intercooler. Mm -hmm. uh, they've actually got 13 more horsepower as well mm. because we've um, uh, changed, the, changed the engine mapping Mm -hmm. uh, just to just be able to squeeze a little bit more power out of it. Okay, wow, that's that's good to know. In very interesting facts, very interesting facts. So around to the front of the car here, um, beautiful headlights on this. The headlights are always a big, big um, thing. The um, aerodynamics and you know how the car all works. These vents down at the front here. If you look at your um, sales material, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all of the promotional stuff, these vents are probably not in all the pictures because this is quite a late addition to the package. Mm. Just during final testing, they realized that the front underwing is so powerful as it was pinning the front of the car down and making the back end dance. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. we had to aerodynamically change how the car acted, right? Mm -hmm. So follow me on this. When the wing is down, like it is right now at the back, mm -hmm. right? The front end, the front underwing is too powerful. Mm. So we added these vents to let extra air mm. go in here into the front underwing to stall out the and kill the downforce of the front underwing to be able to balance the car. Wow. Right? When the wing goes up at the back, we can turn on the full power of this front underwing by closing these vents. Mm -hmm. If we close it, air has to go underneath, creates massive vacuum to pull the front down at the same rate as the back is being pushed down because of the wing. Mm. So it's actually an active aero car as well. Mm. Mm. Whenever the wing moves, these doors move as well. Mm. It's, uh, it's so much cool stuff like that all over the car. It's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath here, we've got the washer fluid, mm -hmm. the main hydraulic fluid. This is what runs the wings and suspension. Mm. Uh, we've got all of the big heavy fuses, mm. the, f the brake fluid, your front anti-roll bar, your power steering rack, and the valve block. And the valve block is what sends the high pressure to the wings and suspension to be able to make the car mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. okay. I noticed that we've already got the positive and the negative battery terminals on, 